also. And then the another famous book is the Debate of Devil and Angel. Okay, Debate of Devil and Angel. And Geshe Michael has been teaching it. In the past, he was only teaching it to the uh, to the to the three jewels in New York. In the past, he was only teaching it in New York. A lot of us we didn't have the the luck and the good seats to listen. But because of COVID, Geshe Michael moved the teaching to Zoom, and he has been teaching this series like a few times a year. The next Matsan Buddha retreat starting on October the 15th for nine days, for 10 days. This Matsan Buddha retreat is going to be very special. Beside the usual Matsan Buddha Sutra, Geshe Michael is going to talk about the debate between angel and devil and angel, which is going to supplement the, what Matsan Buddha Sutra is talking is all about. Okay. And this Panchen Lama was somebody very special. Uh, if you remember the story that Geshe Michael told us, uh, he was doing his meditation and then uh, this uh, Mongol and uh, I think uh, Tibet or whatever, two, two countries were going into a war and then they are already facing each other. And then this Panchen Lama actually came out of his uh, retreat and then went to the center and, hey, you guys, what are you doing here? Go home. <laughs> Don't waste your time here, you know? So he was so wise, he managed to uh, get everybody to go home and not go into the war. All right, so this is the Panchen Lama lineage. And be because of that, Panchen Lama and Dalai Lama were supporting each other. When one passed on, the other will find, will find their incarnation. Okay, now Panchen Lama, what does it mean? Lama means teacher. Panchen, Panchen. Stand, Panchen is a short form of Pandita Chempo. Okay, Pandita Chempo. Pandita, for us Indonesia, we know Pandita means uh, a sage, somebody, uh, or a teacher, a great, a great, a great, uh, a great teacher, right? Pandita means a great teacher, uh, means teacher, and then Chempo means great. Yeah. So a great teacher. Panchen Lama just means a great teacher. And it used to be a common title for great teachers, but because Dalai Lama the fifth gave this title to his teacher, from there on, nobody can use the title Panchen Lama except the official Panchen Lama, all right? So that is the title. All right, now let's come back to this slide. So I mentioned, I gave you a stories of these famous students of uh, Lapsang Drakpa, J. Tsongkapa, right? If you see the name at the bottom here, Ngawang Drakpa Chako Wongpo, right? Ngawang Drakpa Chako Wongpo. Among his students, um, less known, less, less known, meaning that you don't really see his photos, yeah? There is one called Ngawang Drakpa Chako Wongpo who came from Gyarong, which is on the eastern part of Tibet. Right, Gyalrong. And Ngawang Drakpa is his, uh, his uh, monk's name. And then Chako Wongpo is his uh, title. And Chako Wongpo means uh, the, the freer. Freer means the priest from uh, Wongpo, right? Ngawang Drakpa, you see in the Tibetan uh, tradition, right? The student will take part of the teacher's name. So J. Tsongkapa's uh, name is Lotsang Drakpa. So his student is called Ngawang Drakpa. You see? Yeah, Drakpa. And you see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, monks or nuns in the, our tradition will have either Lopsang or Drakpa. Okay. Uh, we will talk about this later. We will see uh, Geshe Michael's teachers his teachers, teachers, you know, all his title will have either Lotsang or Drakpa. Yeah, even Geshe Michael himself, Lotsang Chu Jin, Lotsang Chu Jin, right? Ah, Chu Nyi, Lotsang Chu Nyi, right? And, uh, okay, so this Lam So Nam Sum was written for Ngawang Drakpa Chako Wongpo. This is a very interesting story, right? Um, so, Ngawang Drakpa came from 
Gyalong. And then uh, one day after he learned enough, his teacher, Je Tsongkapa, asked him to go back to, to East. So please go back to the East and build 108 monasteries. 108 monasteries, right? No, you know, building one monastery alone is already very tough. This one built 108 monasteries. But just like a normal, uh, typical uh, Tibetan uh, students, they uh, they just listen to the teacher's, uh, they just listen to the teacher's uh, advice. So he actually went to the East and started to build monasteries. So he finished his first monastery. He recruited his students and he wrote a letter to his teacher. Teacher, I have already finished my monastery. I have my first batch of students. What should I teach? And then J. Tsongkhapa wrote Lam Tson Nam Sum for him, yeah, which is what we call the three principal part for him to teach his students. Now, Lam Tson, uh, J. Tsongkhapa is a very famous. Uh, uh, J. Tsongkhapa is famous for his uh, Lam Rim Chemo. Right? Lam Rim Chemo. Lam is path. Rim is the steps. Steps on the path. Chemo is the big collection. Steps on the path. Collection of the steps on the path to what? To enlightenment. Now, um, if we talk about the spread of uh, Buddhism to Tibet, right? Uh, there are three big waves. The first wave was what is known as the uh, Padma Sambhava, right? Padma Sambhava. So that is the first wave and it brought a, a big a change to the Tibetan society. They had their own bong, which is the traditional belief. And then Padma Sambhava uh, brought the teaching, the Dharma teaching to Tibet and it was widely received by the community. Of course, along the way, uh, the teaching uh, degraded somehow, uh, mixed up with the bong. And that's when the then Tibetan king, uh, Tibetan king wanted to invite a great master from India to, to revive the teaching. And this is the story of Lord Atisha. Okay. It's also a very a long story. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit have a taste of it, right? And we discussed this in the Lamrim, right? This is a Lamrim story. So uh, the, the king wanted to invite Lord Atisha. He was not successful. And he was actually captured by one of the king uh, living near the, the border. And then uh, his cousin, his nephew actually, uh, became the next king and then his nephew was trying very hard to save the uncle. The, the king who captured the uncle wanted the gold, you know, and the nephew managed to collect some golds, accumulate some golds and then wanted to exchange with the king, the old king, but the old king was so wise. He said, no, even if you were to save me now, the max I can live is 10 years. It's not worth the gold. <laughs> Please bring the gold to India so that we can invite Lord Atisha over to Tibet, you know. So the old king was so wise and then the nephew followed. And long story short, they managed to invite Lord Atisha to Tibet. So that is the second wave of the Buddhism to Tibet. And Lord Atisha sort of an exchange with his teacher you know imagine a great teacher your great a great teacher in india and then uh, people wanted to invite him to tibet in the past right when you go to somewhere that means you will be there forever that means you won't be coming back so of course the indian students wouldn't let him go you know hey you are a teacher how can you go to tibet you know so there are a lot of struggles and uh, the story is quite interesting, okay? But let's save it for other day. And uh, long story short, uh, Lord Atisha managed to go to India, uh, to Tibet, and as an exchange, he had to write a summary of the teaching. So that's when the Lamb on the Path, it's called the Lamb on the Path. It's a short one, but it's a summary of the teaching of the Buddhism. Well, if you talk about the... Dharma that Buddha Gautama taught 
during his time, right? He would teach Dharma according to the level of the person that he met along the way. That means what? That means there is no curriculum. <laughs> there is no uh, flow, right? It doesn't mean that, okay, hi, Mr. Choi, oh, your mastery is high already. You should go to university level, you know? And uh, hey, uh, let's say, let me pick up, uh, let's say uh, Shamin, you know, you are uh, maybe primary school, you should go to primary level. No, he, Lord Buddha didn't do that, you know. Whoever he met, he would teach according to their level. So what happened? When you compile his teachings, it would feel very, sorry to use the term, it would feel pretty messy, right? <laughs> Why does he say this here? and say another thing there, you know? So that was my experience too when I was uh, younger. I was so confused with the teaching. I don't know how to start. I don't know where to start and I don't know how I can progress. So home on the path, uh, light on the path was the attempt to make this, to structure the, the teaching. Okay, that was the Lord Atisha book. And then Jet Tsongkhapa, was considered the third wave of the teaching. So Lord Atisha was about year 1000, and then uh, Padmasambhava was about year 800. So there is a 200 years gap between Padmasambhava to Lord Atisha. And then uh, from Lord Atisha to Jay Tsongkhapa, there is a gap of 300 over years, right? So during these 300 years, again, there, is a, there was a degradation of the teaching, right? again, mixed with bong and people put in a lot of um, wrong understanding into the teaching. So, De Tsongkhapa managed to clean up the teaching and then he wrote, he compiled everything into what we what is known as Lam Rim Chemo. Right? So first, Lam Rim Chemo was inspired by the Lamb on the Path. And secondly, it is an effort by De Tsongkhapa to compile things, steps on the path to reach enlightenment. Remember, enlightenment means to become very successful here, right? And of course, he was. He also wrote a big corpus of teachings, uh, many million pages, uh, sorry, many, uh, more than 10,000 pages to clean up the teaching. And that is our focus in Mixed Nuts. In Mixed Nuts, if you notice, a lot of our books are based on J. Tsongkhapa's teaching, if not directly by him, uh, mostly are uh, commentaries by his students or the people of, in his lineage. Somebody asked Geshe Michael, Geshe La, there are so many authors and masters in from Tibet. Why do we only do those under J. Tsongkhapa? And Geshe Michael answered, J. Tsongkhapa writings alone we have not finished them all. First, the translation. Second, not even understanding a little bit of his teaching. How can you say that? Do you think we still have time for other masters? Why don't we just focus on J. Tsongkhapa's teaching first? Only after you complete all his teachings, then yeah, let's explore others. But in the meantime, let's uh, master as much as we can. Right? So that is the story of this uh, Lam Rim. Now, De Tsongkhapa wrote at least three versions of Lam Rim. So now, officially, there are eight, uh, there are eight, eight uh, versions of Lam Rim. De Tsongkhapa alone wrote three. And uh, I forgot there are some, I think either Gel Sabji or Kedrabji also wrote another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here, before I forget, I would like to acknowledge the translators, right? So today, to translate Chinese, we have Gibson, and Gibson is my fellow translators from Mixed Nuts. Thank you very much, Gibson. All those, all of you who listen to Chinese, uh, please uh, offer your thanks to Gibson, okay? Gibson is translating the, ah, Lam Rim, Gibson, this is your topic. <laughs> yeah, Gibson is translating uh, the book on Lam Rim, right? And then uh, for Indonesia, we have uh, Francisca and Grace Swestin, right? And then for Vietnam, we have, uh, today we have Grace Nguyen. Grace Nguyen, yeah? 
coordinated by Aivo. Thank you very much. So um, Jay Tsongkapa wrote three versions of Lamrim. The Lamrim, uh, the big volume, and then the middle, and then the short. And of course, there is a micro, which is pretty famous also, that we cover in uh, ACI 3, uh, the source of all my good. Okay, that is actually, we can consider that as a micro Lamrim. It consists of uh, 14 verses. And Lanzo Namsum, I also like to call it uh, micro Lamrim. It is also 14 verses, right? So if you want to know what Buddhism is all about, and if you don't have time to learn to read the Lamrim Chemo or even the short Lamrim, you can actually uh, read this uh, Lanzo Namsum and also the source of all my good, all right? Okay, now let's continue. So uh, this is Geshe Michael Roach. Um, his teacher is uh, Ken Rinpoche, Geshe Lop Sang Ta Chin, yeah, Ta Chin. Again, uh, you see the H here, right? According to Geshe Michael, the H should not be there because the T is already aspirated, yeah? But the uh, English people, because uh, there is a difference between T and TH, yeah, between non-aspirated and aspirated, they like to put H here. So his name become Tarchin. I mean, his name was written as H Tarchin. So this is Ken Rinpoche. Ken Rinpoche, yeah, Geshe Lopsang Tarchin. Ken Rinpoche basically means the uh, emeritus, right? Emeritus. So uh, he used to be the abbot of the Serame and also the uh, Tantra school, right? So, Ken stands for Kempo, Kempo Abbot, but he retired. So his title is Kensu Rinpoche, Kensu Rinpoche. Yeah. And he's a student of Pabongka Rinpoche and Trijang Rinpoche. Okay, let's talk about Ken Rinpoche first. So Ken Rinpoche uh, moved from China, from Tibet to India in the year 1959. And then he helped to set up the uh, Cerame or mostly the education for the for the uh, for those refugees, right? <clears throat> the education for the refugees in India. And then after that he was sent to New Jersey, the Geshil uh yeah, the 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 monastery in New Jersey. That's where Geshe Michael met him. Ken Rinpoche's teacher is uh, Kyabje Trijang Rinpoche, Lop Sang Yese Tenzin Gyatso. Yeah, we, he has Lop Sang also, he has Gyatso also. Yeah, the big ocean. So Trijang Rinpoche is a very uh, prominent uh, figure, prominent teacher in Tibet. Right? He was uh, Geshe Larampa, which is the highest Geshe. And he was pretty uh, famous, right? He was important and pretty famous. In fact, he is uh, one of, so get, the current Dalai Lama, the 14, has two teachers, two main teachers. So Trijang Rinpoche is one of the teachers. Yeah? So he is a very uh, prominent uh, person. And Trijang Rinpoche's teacher is Pabongka Rinpoche, Dechen uh, Ningpo, yeah? And uh, Pabongka Rinpoche, wrote the three, no, he wrote the commentary to the three principal path that we are learning here, yeah? So the author of the three principal path, the Lamso Namsum, is uh, J. Tsongkapa, and then Pabongka Rinpoche wrote the commentary, and that is what we are learning here, okay? And uh, Pabongka Rinpoche is uh, an ordinary student, yeah, he's a, he was a Geshe, first level Geshe, Lingse Gelshe, uh, Lingse Geshe, yeah, Geshe Lingse. So it's the first, so there are many levels of Geshe, right? So uh, Geshe Lingse is the first tier and then Hlarampa is the highest. Highest means uh, you need to debate across the monasteries and finally in front of the Dalai Lama himself. But Lingse means you just debate in your own monastery, right? That's a Lingse. But despite his uh, ordinary uh, level, he was very uh, popular as a teacher. He could teach using a very simple terms. 
And because of that, he has many students outside the monastery. So he's very popular. Every time he was giving teaching, people would really uh, go and listen to him. Yeah? And in the year 1920, yeah, in the year 1920, yeah, he taught, the, or 1924, around that, he taught the uh, Lamrim Chemo by J. Tsongkhapa, and he, he completed the teaching in uh, 24 days. Yeah? He completed the teaching in 24 days, and uh, during that period, Trijang Rinpoche took notes of his teaching and published it as in the form of liberation in our hands. Yeah? Liberation in our hands. So, I, and this is a very popular book that people are still referring until today. Yeah. Even uh, to some people, this is the Lamrim textbook. And uh, Geshe Michael has been teaching this version of Lamrim for the past, uh, I don't know, five years, 10 years. Yeah, he has been teaching the Lamrim using this textbook, Liberation in Our Hands. And uh, Pabunga Rinpoche was also known as the re reincarnation of of Changkya Rolpe Dorje. And Changkya Rolpe Dorje was uh, also a very uh, important teacher to the China, uh, China, uh, Huang Di Jiao Shang, uh, Emperor, Emperor of China. <laughs> Sorry, my English is gone. So he was also a teacher of uh, China's emperor. Which emperor does anyone remember? I think it's a Kangxi, if I don't, if I remember correctly, right? It's a Kangxi, Emperor Kangxi, uh, Qing Dynasty. So he was so he was very famous. He was given his own room, and then he was given his own uh, facility, right? And when Pabuka Rinpoche was born, and he was identified as the reincarnation of uh, Changkya Rolpe Dorje. By right, he should adopt the name but at that moment the situation was pretty uh, 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 not stable so he decided or rather his uh, the people at that time decided not to give him this title in fact to give him the title pabongka 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 means a big uh, stone right a big stone yeah and chunkya rope dorje was actually a reincarnation of ngawang Dakpa, Chako Wongpo, yeah? If you remember, yeah, here, yeah, the, the name at the bottom, Ngawang Drakpa. So Ngawang Drakpa's incarnation was uh, Changkya Rope Dorje, and Changkya Rope Dorje incarnation is Pabongka Rinpoche. Yeah, so this is how our lineage is built. And of course, uh, from, uh, from J. Tsongkhapa up, there is also a long line of teachers that we should not talk too much today, all right? Okay, so we talked about the Lam Chon Nam Chum already, yeah? And uh, there, are, there are some uh, division of things here. So basically it's considered the stages of mental realization, right? Okay, so um, yeah, we can talk about this a little bit more, okay? So in the universe, in the universe, we can divide things into changing things and unchanging things. Unchanging things are basically space and emptiness, uh, but all the others are basically changing things. We can divide changing things into physical and mental, and also not physical, not mental. Seeds, names, labels are not physical, not mental. Physical things are things that we can sense with our sense organ, yeah? And also uh, thoughts, and thoughts linked to the sense organ. Mental are those things in our mind. And these three principal paths are stages of mental realization. All right. Okay, now let's uh, go into the topic, the three topics. Wow, class one is a bit long. Eh? Sorry, my story is a bit too long. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Nian Jung is renunciation. Yeah, renunciation means what? Means uh, we realize the suffering of life. We realize the things that look good now will also end. Yeah, we realize uh, 
we realize that uh, this is not a beautiful life as we see it. Yeah. Okay, now I would like to ask you, how do we link this in DCI? I have been talking a lot about this for the past two weeks. How do we link this renunciation to DCI? Let me give you a hint. Level one, life tool one. What is the name of that? Indonesia friends. I think you should be very familiar. I've been talking about this for the past two weeks. <laughs> Level one, life tool one. Five goals. Five goals, right? So life five goals. How do we link these to five goals? Five goals, we talk about what? We want to have financial freedom. We want to have... Um, good relationship we want to have a good health we want to have a peace of mind right why because we don't want to have bad financial we don't want to have bad relationship we don't want to have bad health we don't we don't want to have messy mind what is so how do we relate this to renunciation we look at the around us there are people there are many people who don't have financial freedom there are many people, or even me, I don't have financial freedom. I don't have good relationship. I don't have good health. I don't have peace of mind. And I'm tired of this. I want to change all these things. I want to have financial freedom. I want to have good relationship. I want to have good health. I want to have good, I want to have peace of mind. That is called renunciation. In DCI, we say we want to have the goals. If not five, at least four goals, right? Because we see that we are suffering. We, we don't have the four goals, all right? Even those that look good now, we don't have. Or maybe we have for a while. Maybe I have money for a while, but I don't know how long will, this will last. Maybe I have a good relationship for a while, but I don't know how good my relationship will last. Maybe I have a good health now, but I don't know one day I will grow old and get sick and die, you know? I'm sick of all this. That's why I want to learn the system to reach the goals, right? So this is DCI. Of course, the base is Nganjung, which is the renunciation. And not only myself is not getting all those things. I see people around me, they are also not feeling happy. Therefore, I also want them to be happy. I also want them to get out of this problem. Oh, the words are gone. Bodhicitta, right? Bodhicitta, jang chup kisem, means people who want to become Buddha or people who want to become very successful, right? So not only I myself am suffering, or not getting the goals, I also want others to have the same goals. So that is bodhicitta. And finally, the third path will be the correct view, yang dakpe tawa. Yang dakpe tawa. Okay, this one is non aspirated. It's not tawa, but tawa. Yang dakpe tawa. All right, profound understanding of cause and effect. Okay, now let's talk about motivations to practice. So there are three levels of motivation. Yeah, the first one, lesser scope, the wish to escape lower rebirth for self. Now, we like to talk about the wheel of life. We like to talk about the six realms of the six realms of the desire realm, right? And what are the six? We know the three lower and the three higher three lower and the three higher. So the lesser scope people, people with a lesser motivation, they don't want to fall into the lower rebirth. Yeah, so that is the lesser scope. How about the medium scope? Medium scope of motivation is that they want to get out of this suffering cyclic uh, existence. They want to get out of this wheel of life. So inside the wheel, we have the different realms, lower and higher. So the lesser scope people wants to get out of the, want to prevent to be reborn into the lower rebirth. But the medium scope is to get out of the cycle, circle of the wheel. How about the 
greater scope. Greater scope means beside getting out, we want to have full enlightenment. We want to have full enlightenment to benefit all beings. So what is the difference between two and three? Two is just to get out of the will. Three, we want everybody else to also get out of the will, meaning three has bodhicitta. Yeah, so these are the three scope of motivations. Question. Not question. I would like to point your attention that a DCI is designed in this manner. DCI, first, level one, we talk about success inside and outside, right? We want, we talk, level two, we talk about the passion, talents, and motive, uh, and uh, goal, right? Mission. So you see, we need to learn what does it mean to escape the lower rebirth for self? It just means that we don't want to be a, we don't we don't want to go through the situation when we don't reach our goals. Okay. So lesser scope means we are tired of life which are not successful. Yeah. So you see, in level one, level two, we focus a lot on getting ourselves to become better. We learn the tools to achieve our all those four goals, right? Financial goals, relationship, health, and mind, and peace of mind. So DCI is designed in this manner. A lot of people say, hey, you DCI people, you are only thinking of yourself, you know? You are selfish, you know? Well, I always like to say, if you don't take care of yourself, how much help can you give to others? First, we need to take care of our basic needs first. So this is very much similar to the these three motivations to practice. In fact, this is from Lamrim also. Yeah, that's why I say this. The Lamso Namsum is a micro Lamrim. The the approach of teaching is very similar to Lamrim. So we talk about lesser scope. We need to make sure that we have enough, we have enough. And then once we have enough, we need to learn how to escape from all these things. And then finally, we want to bring others. We want to bring others. Before we can bring others, we need to become fully enlightened first. We need to become very successful so that we can help even more people, yeah? All right, now, so the only exit is basically to learn the Dharma, to learn the ACI well in the form of theory and then to learn DCI in the form of practice, practical, okay? So ACI and DCI are equal. It doesn't mean that, ah, I want to learn the deeper content. So I only focus on ACI and I don't like DCI. That is wrong, yeah? Oh, I uh, like practical DCI. I want to ignore ACI. Okay, that is still okay. Okay, you can focus on DCI and ignoring ACI. That is okay. ACI is only needed if you want to become a teacher because people may ask you, where does this come from? But if you only like ACI and don't like DCI, then that is wrong. Okay. All right. Now we are at the end of class one. We are going into class two. In um, translators, do we need to have a break for a while or can we continue? <laughs> I can continue, but I don't know what if our translator can continue. Grace, can you continue talking? <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> How about Indonesia? Okay, let's have a five minutes break. Okay, a short one. Okay, and we come back 8.45, 8.46. All right. Yeah, JT. You are listening, you are okay, but the translator is speaking all the time. Okay, let's come back in five minutes, okay? See you.